The name Tuba is mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Rad, verse 29, as follows Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul kulub. Those who believe and whose hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah fall without doubt in the remembrance of Allah. Do hearts find satisfaction? For those who believe and walk righteousness is every blessedness and a beautiful place of final return. That we're all similar with. One of them is that we are all Muslim sitting here. The second one is that we all want to be the best Muslim and the best person that we can be. And the third one, and what I feel is probably the most important thing that we all have in common, is that we all struggle. So my goal here on Youth Day, jumping right into it, is to talk about the struggle to succeed and where you fit into the world. As a young person, yes, but also, I think this can apply to anybody. Maybe if you're 12 or 22, 40 or 52, it applies. So the question of who am I and where do I fit in, it's a deep one. It's layered, and I personally don't have an answer for that question myself. I'll say it right at the start. I don't, I don't have the answer myself. So why am I speaking about it? So we always hear and people are always saying that if you have a problem, you should speak about it. You shouldn't keep things bottled up. You should speak about your feelings. You should speak about your emotions. But why do they say that? Now, if you look at it from one side, there's a lot of scientific and sociological studies that show that venting and talking about your emotions and your problems is beneficial. It helps you put things into perspective and it helps you gain other people's advices and perspectives on your problems that you might be facing. For example, when your car breaks down, you either know how to fix it or you go and you find somebody who does know how to fix it. And this, from another point of view, there's a verse in the Quran in Surah An Nahl, verse 43, where it states, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. So, does that verse only apply to situations where you don't know how to fix a car or a flat tire? Or does it maybe apply to things of a more broader nature? Now, I'm not trained in Quranic interpretation, so I'm not going to give nasiha on that, but we can leave that as maybe food for thought. So, sometimes it's difficult to voice the emotions in your heads, especially when there's lots of thoughts rocketing around your brains, especially for men. Sometimes we have this perception that we need to be solid rocks, we need to be impregnable, no tears, no emotion, no nothing. But from one point of view, yes, it's true. You do need to be strong. We have to. It's our jobs as Muslims and as men. We need to be strong. We need to be fierce. We need to be protective. And we need to provide for our families. But that doesn't mean that we can't be gentle and kind and caring. And it doesn't mean that we cannot express our emotions. We all know the Prophet ﷺ used to shed many tears. He used to express his emotion. And he was the strongest person to ever walk this earth. So why do we sometimes feel that we're not allowed to follow in that example. When exactly did we start associating strength with being cold and being hard? Our hearts should be strong. I'm not saying they shouldn't be strong, but they should also be strong enough to be soft. So going back to the topic at hand, who am I and what is my purpose here? Now the reason I want to speak about this, despite not figuring out the answer for myself, is exactly what I just said, speaking about your issues speaking about your problems. And my hope is that as we speak about this together, maybe I will gain perspective, despite writing this a couple days ago, maybe when I'm speaking, something will click for me. And in the process, maybe it will actually gain perspective for some or hopefully even all of you. So if you were to go to somebody and say, uh, who's that guy or who's that girl, usually what they'll do is they'll use one aspect or facet of that person's life to try and uh, describe them to you. Uh, for example, they'll say, that's Yasin. He's a, he's a doctor. That's identity through Yasin's profession. Um, they'll say, that's Nabila. That's, she's Maryam's friend. That's identity through association. They'll say, that's Wais. He's an extremely handsome guy. That's identity through uh, Wais's physical appearance. But if we put aside all of our professions and our belongings and all the physical attributes and we boil it down, what, what do we think is left if we take all that away? I think the answer to that is our souls. Now we all have a soul. 
it's as anatomically present in all of us as our hearts. But if you ask a child or even an adult to point to their arm or their eyes, they can. Their ears, they can. But if you ask them to point to their soul, they can't. And that's because the existence of a soul ties directly into the fundamental core of our faith. Your soul is who you are. It's the part of you that laughs. It's the part of you that cries, that feels sad, that feels happy, that feels guilty, that feels angry. And it's stored in a vessel, our bodies. So then we can use that surely to answer the question. If we define by our souls, then just look past everything else. And that's the answer. That should be the end of this talk, right? Your soul is who you are. Define yourself by that, but nothing else. Khalas, end of story. Salam, that's the end. But it's not that easy, right? We, especially as young people, put so much of pressure on ourselves to excel at our jobs, at our you know, university studies, at school. We want to be the best friend, make the most money. And I understand that. I, I get that. I have those same thoughts. I have those same aspirations. I'm the last person that's going to stand here and say that none of that's important. Because those things are important. They are. But they're not the most important thing. The thing is, if you really think about where we fit into the world, that aspect of our lives where what we're doing with our jobs, how much money we're earning, it is important, like I said, it is, it is important, but it's not the main thing. What they are really good though is, it's really good at making us stressed. It's really good at making us anxious. It's really good at making us depressed even and confused. It's, it's easier than ever to be confused in this world. Because at this point in our lives, especially as youth, we're on our way up. We're busy trying to build something and carve out a slice of this world to make it our own. And that has always been a difficult thing. It's not like if you go back 30 years, that was easy. It's not, it wasn't easy. It was always difficult. But it's especially challenging in today's times with everything that's going on around us. And it's no easy task, right? We're trying to do that. We're trying to balance doing what we love with doing what's good for us, with doing that what's good for our family, for what our parents expect us, that's a big one. Our parents have expectations, we try to please them while trying to be happy ourselves, and we're all at the same time struggling to be the best Muslim that we can. It's no easy task, and I don't have a concrete solution for that. So what do we do? We go back to the start of everything I've spoken about today. We start talking about our feelings, talking about our struggles, and sharing the load and sharing the burden that sometimes we get into the habit of thinking that we need to carry on our own. We're all going through things in our lives. Sometimes they're different and sometimes they're not that different. But what remains constant is that we all need to come together and we all need each other. You know, we know that we need to pray five times a day. We know that we need to be good to our parents, speak to our creator, give charity. We're reminded of these things every single Friday, every big night, every Ramadan, we're reminded of that. But what we're not reminded of enough is that it's okay to struggle because we're all struggling no matter how much you feel sometimes in your bones that that other guy over there he has things easier than me he's not struggling i can promise you nothing is always as it seems there's always things that people are not speaking about that are not telling you that they're going through some people find it very easy you know they're blessed they find it very easy to make their five salah every single day they don't miss a salah but maybe those same people we don't know they maybe have struggled from abstaining from other things. Uh, some people find it easy to recite Quran every single day, but maybe they always struggle to wake up for Fajr. No one knows what any one other person is going through. We don't know what everyone is going through, but we do know is that everyone is going through something. Whether it's different, whether it's the same, remains unknown. And because of that fact, we all need to be there for each other. We need to open up dialogues. We need to make ordinary places become safe spaces. And the main safe space should always be the masjid. We need to speak about what we're struggling with. And of course, we need to speak to Allah. You know, whenever, um, whenever I'm going through something in my life, maybe the stress is amped up, maybe I'm feeling overwhelmed, and I speak to my mother about it, she'll always tell me, you need to speak to Allah about it. And it sounds bad to say this out loud, but sometimes, I'm only human, that advice comes a little bit as a, of an irritation. And you think about it to yourself, you're like, why is that irritating me? You think like, I make my salah, I make dua, uh, I do speak to Allah, uh, but I'm so stressed, I can't even think straight, I'm so overwhelmed, things are so busy, how is doing that gonna help me 
any more than all the other things I've been doing. How, how, how is that going to help? But it does. It really does. All Allah wants us to do at the end of the day is to turn to Him, to ask for help, to ask for guidance, when no one else is watching, when no one else is around, whenever you have a quiet moment, and to speak to Him. Personally, I've always thought about the fact that Allah doesn't need us to make salah. You know, it's been mentioned before, but if you really think about it, we have to pray five times a day. But whether we do that or not, all of us here are praying. Whether one person, two people, whether all of us don't actually pray or make salah, it's not going to make Allah more powerful or less powerful. He's the most powerful regardless. That doesn't change anything. So if you have to think about it from a different perspective, maybe think about it from our own point of view, how beneficial is it to pause five times a day, separate yourself from everything in this world that's busy, whatever you're busy with, whatever you're doing, go to the masjid or find a quiet spot at work or school or campus and to just ground yourself and worship your creator. That, that flips a switch in our brains, whether you realize it or not, because what you're subconsciously doing is you're creating this wall between yourself and all of the things that you're stressed about. Because for 10 minutes in a day, five times a day, you're not thinking about that. You're focused, your mind is clear, and you're focused on worshiping something that's greater than yourself. Because when you do that, you realize that the stresses and everything that's worrying you in your life doesn't define you. That there's a greater purpose of that. And that's what happens when you acknowledge a greater power. And I feel that that aspect of our religion, that aspect of our faith is what differentiates us from everybody else. It what makes us very special because we have been given that connection and that bond and we've been given permission by our creator to not know everything. Like no one expects us to know everything, to have the answers to all the problems. All we have to do is have the strength to trust. Tracking it back, that's exactly what we've been speaking about. Venting about your issues, talking about your problems, talking about your feelings and emotions, but this time, it's not with people, this time it's with the one who made those emotions and those feelings. The one who has the power to actually change your circumstances in an instant. Speaking to each other is extremely beneficial. You know, we can gain advice speaking to people older than you, even sometimes younger than you. They give you a fresh perspective, but at the end of the day, all they can do is make you feel validated and give you some advice and then you need to go and fix the problem. But when you speak to your creator, the problem can be fixed for you. And nothing compares to that. Sitting alone, crying your heart out and just speaking to your creator about anything that's bothering you. Life is about balance. Now finding that balance is extremely difficult. Some people find the balance, some people never do and that's scary. But we're all trying. That remains constant. We're all trying to find the balance. So we should help each other, you know? The ways you can do that is simple. You can offer up a smile, maybe send a message here and there to your brother that you haven't seen in a while. Ask, how's he doing? What's going on? You know, for the ladies, ask, to, ask your sisters, what's going on? What's happening? And connect to one another. Everyone needs someone to listen to them. Everyone needs a smile. Everyone needs a shoulder to cry on. Life is too short to be a hard person, to be somebody who doesn't care about others. Because if you do that, you're going through life on your own. And no one wants that. So be strong. But be strong enough to be soft. Speak to your creator. Find confidence in knowing that life isn't always going to go your way. Make peace with that fact. But realize that it's in the struggle of everything that we've been given the opportunity to gain closeness to Allah. It's in the struggle that we have been given the opportunity to actually gain closeness to each other and to become connected. So that together, we can all come together and live the best, most fruitful life on this earth and one day unite in the one place that I promise you every single person here wants to go to, Jannah. Uh, if I ask the Jamaat to please make dua for me if I've made any mistakes or errors here saying anything and that inshallah I can take this advice for myself as well. If I've said anything good, it comes straight from Allah and if I've said anything wrong or incorrect, uh, it's from myself and from the shaitan, so please make dua for us and I'll make dua for you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Takbir. 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 Masha'Allah. Alhamdulillah.
ثم الحمد لله. We thank Allah subhanahu wa taala. You know, sitting here as an imam now, it, it, it's just so many emotions that ran through my entire being. That a youngster, mashallah, that grew up literally in front of me, could give such a powerful message. And I'm sure and certain that everybody has listened to what he has said. But amazing, mashallah, you know, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it just a thought came to mind, and, and you know, I need to share this, is that if the youth can be so brave to stand here in front and share the emotions and share what they feel, I'm sure that everything that Wais has mentioned here today, even the handsome part, <laughs> mashallah, you know, it came from a thought. You know, somewhere he, needed, he thought about this. And that's why in the past, if we could see those who stood up against oppression, they were the youth. They thought that we have to make a change. If we are not going to make a change, what is going to happen to society? And the youth stood up. And mashallah, you know, some of them, they were hurt. Some of them died for a cause. But today, mashallah, in South Africa, we can speak about that beautiful heritage. Whereby our youth has stood up. Some of them died. But alhamdulillah, today, they have education. You know, they can educate themselves. They can go to universities. And you know, don't be fooled by our situation. That in today is also, subhanallah, at a state where we need, we need to worry and we have a concern about it. And that's why I asked our youth, and every youth day, every year I asked our youth to come and express themselves. And I can see it's, they're just growing. It's getting better, mashallah. That always came today and I, I, I'm, I'm appealing to everybody that the message that has been you know, relayed today, think about it. Our creator is the most important thing in our lives as believers. And for a youth to have mentioned that today, it should bring tears to our eyes. Because sometimes we as elders, we don't turn to our Creator. We turn to everything else besides our Creator. And amazingly with this, when I speak about the youth in the past, they stu stood up. There's one beautiful hadith, and I'm going to end off with this, inshaAllah ta'ala. With the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentions that, Al-Mu'min, Al-Qawi, that the strong believer... Right? What is the mu'min that is a, a strong believer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger says that he is more beloved. Al-mu'min al-qawi khayrun ahabba Allah. He is better and more beloved to Allah min al-mu'min al-da'if. Then the believer that is weak. So where do we categorize ourselves? Islam was always the deen that was dominant, that stood out among society. Today, the West is trying to create that Islam is minute and small. But we are the believers. We are the mu'min. We have youth like this that look up to us. We have youth like this that's going to be the leaders of tomorrow. And we need to be there for them. We need to be the strong believers of today in order for tomorrow to be successful and ran by leaders that we can be certain that if we close our eyes today, Allah will be proud of us. Say Amin, Jamaat al Muslim. We have to say Amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Amin mean? Anybody knows what Amin mean? Amin mean if we make the dua, we ask Allah to accept. We read Surah Fatiha every day. At the end of Surah Fatiha, we read Surah Al Ladina and Amta alayhim, Ghairil Magdubi alayhim, Walad Dalin. The conversation between Allah and the creation at that time. What does Allah say? That is between me and my servant. So meaning Allah speaking to the malaika say that's got nothing to do with you. It's between me and my servant and I will reward my servant accordingly. So when we say Amin, Allah will reward us accordingly. Be sincere in that Amin, Because that is a conversation between you and your Lord Allah. Always is mentioned, dua is important. So this was really, mashallah, a touchy, beautiful message that has been given. Do we know ourselves? Where are we heading? Do we know our creator? Do we have enough time with our creator? Create that moments. Five times daily Allah gives us opportunity. You can be busy in the busy world, no problem, but five times a day. Take our time and just focus on you, focus on yourself and focus on your creator. And speak to him, Jalla Jalla. He's waiting and he wants to answer your call, inshaAllah ta'ala. So may he answer our calls. So today, inshaAllah, we are very, very honored and fortunate to have our youth conducting our, our Jumu'ah for us, inshaAllah ta'ala. That the person that conducted the Jumu'ah now was none other than Hafid Uwais Adam. MashaAllah, he is also one of our, MashaAllah, you know, Huffad that stand in front for us and lead the Salat of Taraweeh for us. This was, I think, the third year, Uwais, that you stood, it was the second year that he stood with us. Although I've been trying many years before that, you know, and uh, Uwais just said, no, Maulana, he didn't like me that time. 
He said, because your name is Wasim, handsome, today I'm going to show you a bow, I'm handsome. He said that today, now I know why it was like that. Now astaghfirullah al-azim, but alhamdulillah, today he came and he's standing with us and we are so happy and lucky to have our Hufad, many others like Hafiz Hussain, you know, all our own, that is standing and leading us in Taraweeh. You know, Allah bless them, Allah increase them, and Allah increase us as a community, that we, yeah, on the southern tip of South Africa, wallahi, this is a gift from Allah. Yeah, on the southern tip of South Africa, the Ahufad, those who memorize the Quran, those who lead, those who read Allah's book, those who come today on a Jumu'ah and giving us nasiha. This is bounties from Allah. It's, it shows us that our future are looking bright. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Our future are looking bright. May Allah preserve our youth, inshallah. We're going to have the Adhan, the first Adhan being rendered by his beloved brother Idris, mashallah, Adam. So, uh, the two brothers, mashallah, they're going to show each other a bow today. I'm sure this Adhan is going to be out of this world. You know, handsome, but he's going to say, Buddha, I've got the most beautiful voice again, mashallah. Allah bless him, amin, and increase Idris as well. And then we have the second Adhan that's going to be done by none other than Hafiz Muhammad Rehan Abdullah, mashallah, who's also grown in this community, alhamdulillah. He became Hafiz in this masjid. Hafiz of the Quran in this masjid, mashallah. So Allah really bless our community again. And then we have the Arabic khutbah that's going to be done today by my son. Alhamdulillah, please make dua for him. Allah must grant him also to become a leader. There's a reason why we give names, right? And a certain name has been given to him. And inshallah, we're speaking on Youth Day. He's going to be, inshallah, one of the youth that's going to liberate Islam once again. And not only Islam, but Masjid Al-Aqsa. Ameen. That was the intention, inshallah. And then we have the Fard Salah that's going to be rendered by, subhanallah, you know, one of my first students, Hafiz Yasin Jadin. Mashallah is also a child from one of our committee members. And we can see the work that's been done. And the people that's working here, their families are involved. Their families are at the masjid. That is why we're starting somewhere. Tomorrow it's going to, inshallah, be your children or your grandchildren. But we will give them opportunity in Masjid Tuba. We will, because we want to create leaders and thinkers of tomorrow, inshallah. Make dua that we achieve that. Amin. Inshallah, we're going to have a very young boy. I think he's about 11 years old or 12 years old. We're going to make the dua after the salah, inshallah ta'ala, by the name Mikael Lazar. Alhamdulillah, they've moved into the area. He's uh, pursuing to become a hafiz of the Quran as well. May Allah bless him. Amin. And grant him that, inshallah ta'ala. And then we have our very own sound master. MashaAllah. He's a youngster. He's a youth. He lives in our area. Muhammad Zia Ibrahim dedicating time you know we might look at it as being small but he's studying sometimes he leaves his studies he comes just to put the sound right for us in order for you to have a beautiful yeah and sound mashallah allah bless him also and his parents because it takes a lot the youth is very busy today i can tell you we ask them i can't be there i can't do it i've got this and that but they struggle and they hear Sometimes, like uh, I think it was when Sheikh Ismail has, has Ismail Lant has uh, done the dhikr here, Muhammad Zia was in studies. He was writing in, in important exams. He came, he left that. He came and he sorted out the sound and he left again, subhanallah. This is the dedication of our youth at Masjid Tuba. May they be inspirational to others, inshallah ta'ala. That they should also be able to do as much as our youth are doing and much more, inshallah. Ameen, ya Rabbal Alameen. Then, very importantly, speaking about the youth, we have brilliant speakers that will be here next week by us. You know, by the likes of Mawlana Mu'ad Ali. I'm sure everybody knows Mawlana Mu'ad is a stalwart. You know, he's really a pioneer of our community, still alive. You know, we need to really suck the ilm out of him to say it in such words. This man's got so much knowledge to offer, but we are not connecting to these ulama. Please, wallahi, come ascend your children. Such important topics. Right, the youth matters is with regards to vices challenging our youth today. So Mala Mu'ad is going to deal with relationships and the, the topics that will be studied, that will be uh, addressed will be social media, identity crisis, gender equality, LGBTQ, music and relationships. We have uh, Mawlana um, Yahya Mahdi who is youthful but mashallah, you know, he's got a drive for youth. He's got a way that he gives across his messages. So send your children. Let them come between the ages of 14 and 25, inshallah ta'ala, between the ages of 14 and 25. Next, I personally want to invite the parents because we are actually busy having a workshop done for our parents. Because sometimes we focus on the youth, but our, ter our parents don't, don't know how to handle these issues and situations. It's hot topics today. We have to deal with it. So inshallah, let our parents also prepare themselves now because Masjid Tuba will have something to offer for you. 
even our elders inshallah come forth and be part of these beautiful workshops that will only make us grow into a community inshallah that will be inspirational to others that they can also follow in these footsteps inshallah but make use of your ulama you know allah he snatch he doesn't snatch the ilm away from people allah don't destroy the books what does allah do allah snatch them away with the qabdil ulama with the ulama allah take them away and this is how we should start to worry if you look at how the ulama is passing on our pioneers are leaving our society we need to worry what are we putting in place what's our contingency planning do we have enough and sufficient ulama to fill that gaps allahu akbar jamaat muslimin that is for all of us now that's a message for all of us think about it we all want our children to be doctors we all want our children to have every profession in this world but do we sometimes think who's going to be our spiritual guides and leaders for tomorrow who's going to lead my grandchildren my great-grandchildren Allahu Akbar. Yes, we must be doctors. There must be doctors. But beyond that, our worry and concern should be, where's our deen at? Our top scholars for tomorrow should be sacrificed for Allah. That is, that is, that is deep. That is heavy. That I can, I can, I can even feel, you know, that, 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 that emotion that's running through the hearts of people. When we say this, the most intelligent children today should be sacrificed for Allah's deen. And what do I mean by that? Send them to study Allah's deen. Send them to study the Quran. Today the most intelligent ones are going where? They're studying to become lawyers, doctors, dentists, whatever the profession is out there. And what? With the weakest one normally among us. Ah, you know what? Stima for whom let the Quran can study. Stima for Ima Alim Pirakman. You know, say, may he survive in the world. Strangely, I'm going to end off Sheikh Ramadan al Bhuti mentioned that when he completed his studies in matric, he said that, you know, he decided he's going to study deen. And all his friends and all those who were surrounding him said, you are you crazy? You are such an intelligent being. Because he showed intelligence already from a young age. They said, how can you decide to go and study deen? Go and use your intelligence. You can benefit the world so much. And what did he say at the end of his life? He smiled. And he said, you know what, all of them that said that today they stand in line and they queue to kiss my hand. <laughs> they're kissing the one that they thought was silly and crazy. They're kissing him his hand. Why? Because he answers their question. They are the professionals. But he answers the professionals' question. Through what? Through the Quran and the Sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu How could we ever have thought that ilm of deen can be substituted by the ilm of dunya? Never. Never. It can never be better. We are downscaling ourselves as believers if we think like that. We need to change our thought, and that was the message of always today. Give me Marv, I had to speak because I always spoke just at one o'clock. It was a worry for me, subhanAllah. Allah bless him. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Next time he's going to speak, he's going to tell me, Mawlana, you said I must speak. I spoke for an hour now, inshaAllah. May Allah bless our youth and grant him ilm, inshaAllah ta'ala, to inspire us always. And then the highlight that I want to mention to our community, and I know everybody probably knows about this, we have the honorable Mawlana Sheikh Mufti Ismail Mink, inshallah ta'ala, that will be here, be here in Masjid al Tuba, inshallah, tomorrow evening. I can see everybody, inshallah, you will be present. Come, his topic is hot. His topic is how we can be successful in both worlds, inshallah ta'ala. So, khairan, inshallah. So, let's, 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 how, how to achieve the best of both, both worlds, Mufti Mink, inshallah, tomorrow. So, inshallah, let us make an effort. This is uh, a, a leader globally, mashallah. Somebody that inspires people globally. And you know, some of us, uh, the strangest thing is some people will always try to give negative comments about people. But if I must tell you the amount of people that this man has reached in order for them to see the beauty of Islam, that is sufficient for us. Don't worry about the negatives that is out there. We need to deal with our issues. But don't deprive ourselves and others to come and listen where somebody can inspire us to gain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, also, we are saddened also today by one of our musallis, mashallah, you know, his, his, his beloved son, his grandchild, the uncle who passed away, his grandchild is sitting right in front of me. Uh, the janazah of uh, Uncle Muhammad Hassan Sunday will be today at 2.30. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the deceased Jannah to Firdaus al-A'la, inshallah ta'ala. Allah place sabr and contentment in the hearts of the family members. The janazah will be at 2.30. 
at uh, 120 Tafel Berg Street, Botasach, and the Salatul Janaza at Panorama Masjid thereafter, inshallah ta'ala, then to move to Maitland Maqbara, inshallah ta'ala. And then to next week, inshallah, we want to prepare everyone just uh, for a collection for Ottery. There's a masjid that's going to be built, inshallah ta'ala, in Ottery. Uh, there's some beautiful assistance. If there's anything that you want to know about it, there's a beautiful presentation that was sent with regards to everything about the masjid that will be built. And inshallah, we as Masjid Atuba would like to... Uh, to extend a helping hand to them and inshallah remember the one who builds a house for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a similar house for them in Jannah may we be from among them Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen and uh, I think that is it one more du'a, uh, oh, du'as for Mu'id Balikh 16 years old youth from Settlers High in our community he left today to represent South Africa in international maths Olympiad in China and Japan MashaAllah, may Allah grant you to be top. He will beat everyone in this world now because we made dua in the hour of Jummah. Uh, of Jumu Yo, two Amins. Amin. He's from our community, Jabhat al-Muslimin. Little bit more enthusiasm. He's going to represent us in mathematics globally, MashaAllah, in China and Japan. So may Allah grant him success and ease, inshaAllah. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alamin. Barakallahu fikum. That is the announcement, inshaAllah. So now we'll have... Uh, Idris, insha'Allah ta'ala, will be rendering the first adhan for us. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفناء حي على الفناء الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى نحمد ونصلي ونسلم على رسول المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله أستغفر الله الجليل لي ولكم ولسائل المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشده ومن يعصهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأستقهم حيا عن أثع عن أثمان وعقضاهم عليه وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدنا سي سيدة شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسل الله وأسل رسوله اللهم اغفر للعباس ووالدي مغفرة ضائرة وباطلة لا دغار الذنب الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم ربنا لا تأ أخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانسرنا على القوم الكافرين إن الله, إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم رحمكم الله
الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا الصراط المستكيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم خير المحضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسأوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا كذيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتعوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لحوا انفضوا إليها وتركوك قائما كل ما عند الله خير من اللحو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازكين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا الصراط المستكيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم خير المحضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله 
إله إلا هو الحي القيوم نتوب إليك ونسألك التوبة ومغفرة وهداية لنا إنه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشفام المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم به ورسوله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا, ربنا تأخذنا إن نسينا وأفطعنا ربنا ولا, تح ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرع كما حملت وعلى الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا ونحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإلا تغفر لنا وترحمنا لكنا من الخاسرين ربنا ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذا ديت إذ هديتنا باب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين مقبول إن شاء الله آمين The name Tuba is mentioned in the Holy Quran in Surah Al Rad, verse 29, as follows Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul kulub. Those who believe and whose hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah fall without doubt in the remembrance of Allah. Do hearts find satisfaction? <laughs> For those who believe and walk righteousness is every blessedness and a beautiful place of final return.